today changes my whole entire life. Welcome to Gritability, a podcast about the power of perseverance, overcoming seemingly insurmountable odds to attain the life of your dreams. I'm your podcast host, Adam Clausen, and with me today, we have a very special guest, Paul Macaluso. Paul, good morning. Good morning, Adam. Thank you for having me. Yes. Well, I am so excited to have you here. You and I met recently at an event and was a great opportunity for us to talk a little bit. We continued that conversation. And as you shared some of your personal story, I was really inspired. And for me, you know, that's what this podcast is all about. We're looking for stories of inspiration because so many people see the end result. They're going to see the success and they don't understand what it took to get there. Yeah, I agree. So I'd love to to talk a little bit with you today about first kind of where you started out. Give us a little bit of your background um, for people who are just tuning in, don't know you. Tell us a little bit about Paul. Sure. So I've been in Las Vegas about 17 years now. I came here when I was 19 years old. Um, me and my wife both left California. We grew up in the same city, met each other there. Um, found our way out here. Uh, over the course of time, I've dabbled in all kinds of entrepreneurial endeavors. I've owned cleaning services, junk removals. By trade, I'm a commercial real estate broker who specializes in multifamily housing investment sales. Um, had a little bit of a challenge coming up. Found myself hanging out with the wrong folks doing the wrong things when I was younger. Um, so from about the age of 14 to 18, I was in and out of several different juvenile facilities. I, I believe I've only spent maybe during the course of that time, six to seven months outside of the walls as opposed to inside. Wow. Um, so that's pretty much, you know, in a, in a nutshell where, where, where I was and now here I am. <laughs> that's a heck of a jump from there to here. Those years that you spent uh, in those juvenile facilities, you said you only had about six, seven months outside of that? Yes. Wow, those are like formative years. And I know for me, whenever I look back in my youth, you know, I look at those, those key moments, those persons who were of influence, good or bad, and the potential that I had to maybe take a different path but ultimately, I ended up on the on a road that led me to prison for many, many years. So I'm always looking for those um, key points that helped people avoid that. You spent those key critical years. At some point, there must have been a breakthrough. Like, what was it that allowed you to just change your trajectory dramatically to start moving you to where you are today? Um, in all, in all honesty, the the change in direction didn't happen until I came out to Las Vegas. So um, the last time I was incarcerated as a youth, me and my wife, my, my wife as of today, um, talked about moving to Las Vegas. But given the lifestyle that I was living and the things that I was a part of, it was very difficult for me to try to remove myself at, at that period of time from that environment. So uh, unfortunately, the, the last time I was incarcerated, I got out and then shortly thereafter, I caught another case and I ran. So I had a, a felony warrant after me and we, we ended up coming out here in the wild, wild west. So at, at the time it was a, it was a much different city, um, but basically I, I built a little prison for myself outside of the walls because I, I being on the run, I was very limited on what I can do. And as I removed myself from the environment that I grew up in and I was out here experiencing really a, a whole new life, um, the change really came. I, I stumbled across some personal development information that really had me questioning um, my, my, my life prior, you know. So I, I always felt like there was going to be something more and something bigger out of life for me. But given the, the things that I was involved in and the stuff that I was doing, I just didn't necessarily see that happening. So um, coming out here, being on, on the run, uh, it took about five or six years of being on the run out here before I was in a position financially to to get myself squared away legally. Um, and then directly after that, I, I jumped into real estate and have been off to the races ever since. Wow. 
So life on the run brings you out here to Vegas. Um, I love what you said about creating your own prison. And a lot of people probably won't understand it. Anybody who's never been on the run before, you know, it's one thing to avoid going to prison, but then, you know, all of the challenges that come along with staying out, staying, you know, avoiding the police and, and making sure that you fly under the radar, that's a tough life. How are you able to do that? It was very tough. I, at, to this day, I still don't know how I, I did it because, you know, if you look back on my life and being from 14 to 18 and then having come out here and staying out of trouble for so long, I hadn't stayed out of trouble that long the previous five or six years. So it was, it was definitely a, uh, an effort on my part in order to not find myself wrapped up. But I think the change of environment plays a big role in that. You know, if you want something bigger out of life and you feel that you're, you're stuck in a rut, change of environment, in my opinion, is going to be the, the first thing and then changing your mind and your mindset is, is going to be second. And I, I attribute all of my success to, to being able to have the ability to recognize that my mindset that I had then, as opposed to what it is now, is, is what has allowed me the success that I've had, as well as having a loving family. Mm. I'm going to get to the family part in a minute because I had the opportunity to meet your wife as well, so I know part of your inspiration there. Um, if you look behind you, I mean, there's a lot of books here in the studio, right? Mm -hmm. These are the books I brought home from prison with me. Many of them were instrumental in me becoming the person that I am today and being that positive influence that I couldn't find, you know, that I had been searching for in my youth. I found much of that information that I was searching for in these books. So when you talked about that personal development, it, to me, it's amazing. Like you are on the run and somehow found something that changed your mindset? Because I heard you say mindset a couple of times. If you could just give us an idea of, like, is there one? I'm, I'm a big, you yeah, know. Yeah, so the, the original content that set me down the path of personal development was the, the movie The Secret. Okay. Um, my mom came across it and said, hey, you know, I think you should take a look at this. So when I looked at it, then, you know, I'm the kind of guy that once I, I find something that I like, I go down the rabbit hole with it. So <laughs> I started looking into all the different um, content uh, providers on that video, all the different speakers. I ended up meeting most of them, actually. At, at, really? Yeah, uh, through my path and to where I am now. I've met quite a few of them. Um, and just listening to what those types of folks say you should fill your mind with in regards to content and books. So, you know, I got Think and Grow Rich. I got Richest Man in Babylon. Um got a bunch of Brian Tracy books, got a bunch of Zig Ziglar books. So they're, they're definitely, you know, Think and Grow Rich, Outwitting the Devil, uh, Richest Man in Babylon. Those are instrumental. I read those books at least once a year since I read them from the very first time years ago. Mm. So that's another thing that I love to get into, like those habits, practices, patterns. So coming back to those instrumental, those most influential works, you come back to them once a year, review them, probably get something new out of it each time, would you say? Absolutely. Absolutely. Those the, the 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 messages inside of those books is timeless. There's, you know, especially given that some are almost hundreds of years old. And some of the teachings you go to the richest man in Babylon are thousands of years old. Mm -hmm. They still ring true today. So being able to recognize that content and how impactful it's been for me, I I will never not go back and revisit the content. Cause like you said, you you do learn something new every time. But then it also gives you a, a baseline for accountability for yourself and where you should be at least um, practicing. Love that. Yeah, I'm a big believer in as your perspective changes, sometimes when you revisit information, you're going to see it in a whole new light. Same information, like you had it, but as your situation changes and you come back to it, you're like, man, I got it the first time, but now I see a different level to it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Every time you go back and read anything like that, you're going to find those little nuggets that you may have missed or you read it and then you're able to say, you know what, I do recognize applying that to my life in this way. And I'm, I'm sure glad I did. So there's there's definitely timeless information that you're going to be able to pull inspiration, motivation and drive from out of that stuff. Well, it's pretty amazing that you've been able to actually meet a number of those people. Yeah. Um, I want to say I've only, I think I've met one and it was really by chance. It was John Maxwell. 
I had the opportunity to meet him at a conference and I wasn't even supposed to be at the conference. You know, I just kind of, it was a last minute thing. Guy that, you know, was actually one of the speakers on a side stage said, hey, would you be interested in going to this thing? Doesn't tell me what this thing is, this event. And then I find out like that evening over dinner is keynote speakers, John Maxwell. I'm like, oh man, like I got to meet him. I got to talk to him. He's like, yeah, don't worry about it. We got this. So I did. And I was like, I was almost starstruck standing there with them. I'm like, you have no idea. Like not just the impact you had on me, but me being able to take these teachings and share them with all of these other men who I was incarcerated with. You've changed countless lives, families, like, and he's like, yeah, you know, like (laughs) I'm sure he gets this all the time, right? The guy's been doing it for a long time. So for me, that was incredible. Who were some of those speakers that you had an opportunity to meet with? And, and what was that exchange like? Sure. So the, the, the first guy that I was able to meet was Michael Beckwith. And I happened to find myself in Southern California at the time. And um, there was a conference going on. And as I was just passing through the hallways, I saw, you know, who was some of the speakers. And I said, oh, shit, that's Michael Beckwith on there. I said, you know what? I'm, I told myself when I saw that movie, I'm going to meet him one day. So I'm going to make it a point of circling back down here in the in the evening and see what's going on. So I just was walking around, and, and I saw him. I approached him and spoke to him, let him know how he had uh, helped me in, in my life. And, you know, I told him, I said, you know, I don't know if it's uh, that this is by chance. He said, no, it's not by chance. It's on purpose. I knew you were coming. So, <laughs> you know, it was, it was one of those, and it's a, just a great, great vibe coming from that man when, when I met him. So it was that was the first one. Uh, Bob Proctor was the second one. I don't necessarily remember exactly what event I was at, but uh, Bob Proctor came to that event, and it was crazy because at the time the the movie was quite popular still, and he came and I forget what he was giving away. He was giving away something as an incentive for people at the event, and he was just mobbed, and um, somehow, some way, he he took to 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 his attraction came to me and we just struck it off, struck a conversation and ended up talking to each other. And there's you know hundreds of people swamped all around us but he's given me a one-on-one time in front of everybody for like 20 minutes wow yeah so it was it was very cool oh that's that's got to be an incredible experience to to be in that crowd and to have his focused attention yeah wow it is I'm and, a- and focused attention you know it's funny that you say that because it's anything in life that we're gonna do i'm a believer that it, it starts in your mind no matter what it is that you want to do out here in the real world you ha- you have to have your mind right and you have to have the drive and the passion and the, above all else, the positive mental attitude like Napoleon Hill talks about in Think and Grow Rich. You know, there's those success principles that are found in that book. I, I attribute all my success to it. I mean, if, without finding that book and reading it and studying it and, and, and practicing what is said in there, I, I don't know where I would be. You know, having come across personal development through The Secret and, you know, basically kick, kicking things off with that, that's that's great, but finding that timeless information that so many people I'm I'm just one of, you know, millions of people that have had their lives changed by what that man was able to put down in that book. But I will say this, not every person takes that information and acts on it. That's the difference. And that's where, you know, I know you've had incredible success as an entrepreneur, as a business owner in real estate, done all of these things coming from that beginning. You know, where so many people, especially, you know, I I speak specifically to those who get caught up in the criminal justice system that are justice impacted. It's a very difficult cycle once you're in it to break free. It is. You managed to, to, you were in the system, could have very easily kept, kept going, you know, ended up in a similar situation that I ultimately did. But somehow you were able to take that information and act on it. So I'm always curious, you know, you talk a little bit about what was most instrumental, but taking the action, doing those things, and and I'm a big believer in, you know, your habits, your practices, your rituals, those routines that, like you said, coming back once a year, but even more consistently, like on a day-to-day basis, what are some of those principles, principles that you took from that you know self <clears throat> excuse me self development what are some of those principles that you've applied to your daily life well 
speaking specifics, I, I don't know off the top of my head if I could say, you know, this this particular thing from this book or from this is what I do every single day. There, it's a it's a bowl of gumbo from all of it. You know, um, one thing that I had learned long time ago and it really resonated with me on this path was people tell you when you're young, knowledge is power. And everybody believes that growing up, that knowledge is power, but organized applied knowledge is power. Not, not knowledge alone is not power, but organized applied knowledge is power. And once I understood that, I started to really consume the content differently, you know, and read the books differently and understand things from a different perspective. Understanding that you have to apply what, you, what you've learned. It's one thing to like it, but you have to apply it. And the constant battle that we have every day going out into the world and dealing with the things that we deal with, we all deal with different stuff. Um, but keeping that positive mental attitude, I would say, is something that I do my best to try to keep every single day. Now, I'm not perfect. You know, there, there are days where, uh, you know, I get down in the dumps or things don't go the way that I'd like and I get frustrated. But always coming back to, to, to fortifying that positive mental attitude, I would say, is something that is paramount to my success and having gone from, you know, the situation that I was in to where I'm at now. And people, like you said, they only see the end result of stuff. They don't necessarily understand the path that it took to get here. I, I've, I always say this, I'm a 20 year overnight success. So, you know, it was a long bumpy road to get to where I am. Um, you know, when I came out here, we we're, we we're almost homeless at one point in time. Mm. You know, we lived at the weeklies. We, we did, it was, it was grimy. It was a, it wasn't fun, you know, and now we own several real estate uh, investments. We own businesses and it's just, it, it's a dramatically different life. And, having the, the grit ability to get through it all. And I, I love the grit ability side of, of what you're doing and, and how that translates into so many different things for people that, that really grasp that concept and, and are able to do it. Mm. I always say you can have a bad experience, but you don't need to allow it to become a bad day. I can't remember the last time I had a bad day just because I got myself into the habit of when things start you know, going left, I'm like, time out, <laughs> time out. And I have specific strategies like to help me refocus, take a breath and okay, let me get back on track. So when things start going wrong for you, is there any specific thing that you do that helps to get you right back on track? Not necessarily as far as a, a ritual practice, but always, always remembering that, you know, this too shall pass. You know, you've been in, you've been in tougher situations than this. Yeah. Things didn't go exactly as planned or 100% the way you would want, or even if the, everything goes to shit on you that day, you know, just, just understanding that's just one day. You've been through a lot worse. You're going to get through this just the same as anything else. And if you lose that positive mental attitude that you have, it's going to make it even worse. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's a snowball effect with personal development, and it can go the opposite way as well. So if you have a shitty day and you start, you know, getting into your feelings and doing the things that aren't conducive to, to getting to where you want in life, you, you know, you're going to build that momentum in the wrong way. You know, you have to, you have to keep the momentum in the right ways. And when you do find yourself slipping, you just got to get back up. You know, there's, there's no two ways about it. You can't, you don't want a pity party. You don't want people feeling sorry for you. Get the fuck back up and do what you got to do. You know, when you fall down, get back up. It's not about how many times you get knocked down. It's about how many times you need to get back up. You get knocked out nine times and get up 10 and you're a success. And people forget that. And that's grit ability. That's grit ability. That's exactly what we're talking about. I love that. So you have to have those those challenges. Like that's what makes us who we are. And yeah, people people run from challenges in this in this mm -hmm. life. They like to feel comfortable. They don't like to get outside of comfort and feel like, oh well, if I try this and I fail, then I'm a failure. You know, it, it, failure brings the seed of equal or equivalent opportunity with it. So you you have to remember that. Again, it goes back to think and grow rich. Adversity is our friend. You know, it's, it's about a shift in your perspective. If you think that the challenges you face are putting you further behind, they're, they're actually not. It's just like sales. Every no brings you closer to that yes. And again, it's grit ability. Mm -hmm. So how do you constantly challenge, stretch yourself to ensure that you continue to grow? Well, shit, the practice that I'm in for by trade is tough. You know, it's a, it's a it's a tough trade. So staying in 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 the the, the industry that I'm in, yeah. taking the risks that I take. You know, the first in real estate investment that we made, 
I, my son was, w w I found out a month after I made it and put everything I had on the line that I, I, I basically grinded my ass off for the previous six years. Every penny that I had, I put on the line for this investment because I believed in what I had learned as in, in regards to the knowledge that I acquired over the time period. And then it was, you know, at that point, it's you, you got the capital, you got the knowledge, apply it. Otherwise, it's going to go to waste, you know, and then finding out you're going to have a child to be responsible for <laughs> shortly after putting everything <laughs> on the line. It's, uh, you know, if you don't have grid ability, I don't know how you're going to get through it. Yes. So tell me about that family influence. What, what does that look like? Tell us a little bit about the family life. Wow. So family is everything to me. I you see know, it, it, man. You just lit up as soon as you started talking about it. Yeah, family is everything. Um, being in the situation that I was in when I was younger, I was very close to my grandmother. And having the experience of going in and out, in and out, and, and losing that time with her um, was very difficult. My grandfather passed while I was incarcerated one time. I wasn't able to, 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 to excuse me, actually, when, he, when I was out here, I wasn't able to go to the funeral. Um, then my grandmother passed away, and, you know, I took a big risk going back to her funeral. And it was uh, the, losing the time with the people that you love. Time is everything. You know, money ain't shit. You're gonna, your money's going to come and fucking go. It doesn't matter. You know, but the time that we have, once it's spent, it's gone. So, you know, choosing to spend my time unwisely, there's, there was a lot of consequences that I have to live with in my life by, by doing that. Um, now that I have a family of my own, I have two children, a wife, there's no way that I would, I would take that time away or do something that would jeopardize to spend that time in, in a way that I, I would lose out on time with them. So, you know, in, in regards to the family life, it, family means everything. You know, having ha having the responsibility of taking care of kids, having the responsibility of pro being a provider for the family and a, a solid husband for your wife, it's not easy. You know, it's not easy being a father. You know, it's 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 one thing to be a dad and, and have a baby, but to to really be a father, I think, is is totally different than than being a dad. You know, someone's your dad because you you know they they got your mom knocked up, but they're your father when they sit there and they mentor you and guide you and put you down on the, on the right track and help you out in life. Um, and my wife, she's solid. I mean, I don't know if I would have ever been able to get to where I'm at now without my wife. I mean, the shit that I put that poor woman through in regards to our life and where we've been and to where we are, I, I don't know that I could have did it without her. I, I really don't. I don't. It would have been immensely more difficult to get to where I am without having her be with me the, every step of the way. And it wasn't easy. You know, there was very stressful times in life. You know, there was a point in time where we were out here and we split up. And that was, that was by far worse than being incarcerated in any of the situations that I had found myself in and being away from my wife and, and experiencing that not having her with me every day, that there's no way I'd ever go back to doing something like that. So where you two are now, you've built businesses together? Yes. Yeah, and so we've got businesses, we've got real estate investments. Um, every, every step of the way, she's been there, and she's never once, you know, so, sometimes when you're in a relationship, from what I hear, I'm not in one of those, so from what I hear, one person will want to do something investment-wise, and another person will want to do something more conservatively. And... Finding yourself in a relationship where you guys are both like-minded and, and able to pursue things of similar interest for investment and betterment of the family, is it makes things a lot easier, I would imagine. I can't imagine going home and trying to tell my wife, hey, you know, we're going to invest in this building, this, these are the numbers, and then having her look at me with a blank stare and not understand what I'm saying. And even some of the time, the shit that I do say to her that we're going to make an investment in that she's not familiar with, it's, all right. I got your back. You know, I know you know what you're doing. Go for it. You know, and and having someone not be that way, yeah, I don't know. It, it would be tough. It would be very, very tough. So I'm very blessed to have the woman that I have in my corner. You know, most marriages, uh, primary cause of conflict is over finances. Yeah. So the fact that you guys are on the same page, like note to anybody out there, you know, looking to get into a relationship. Make sure you're both on the same page with your, you know, uh, your finances and what you want to do investment wise makes life a whole lot easier. Yeah. 
It does. Well, I mean, I, I heard a while back, you know, the, the three things that married people argue about is sex, money, and the kids. You know, so it, if you don't get those three things right, you're going to have a tough marriage life. True. So true. Now, while I was incarcerated, you know, I spent over 20 years incarcerated, and it was, uh, there was a lot of time for me to figure out the mistakes that I made, the things that I wish I would have had. And part of that is I, li I grew up in a single parent household. Um, so I didn't have that strong male role model. And I always said, you know, how I would, what I aspired to be as a father. And I looked around and there are so many fathers in prison who have children on the outside and come up with all the reasons why they can't be there for their children or they, you know, why they fell short. And I couldn't ever comment on that because I wasn't a father, right? All I could say is, this is how I would like to be as a father. And until I actually became one, when I had that good fortune, my, my miracle child, right? Like at that point, then it became real. Then it was about, okay, I said I wanted to, to do and to be all of these things for my son. And I am reminded daily of the commitments that I made and what I need to do. And, you know, perfect example was yesterday we were doing something and my wife needed me to step up, take my son. Like I had a plan for the day, other things going on. And she's like, I need some help. He's not feeling well. I have a meeting. And instead of being like, damn, like I have my own agenda. I was like, I paused. I'm like, how lucky am I to be in a situation where I get to have my son for this time, bring him with me to a meeting, you know, and he gets exposed to this early on. So it's that difference of perspective and it's about that appreciation for family. So I've seen you and your wife together in person and you, you know, saying that you guys are on the same page, you have these businesses together. And just when I asked you about family to see you light up, I know that that's a big part of your life and man, um, always looking for those points of inspiration, you know, aside from family, what else lights you up like that? What else gets you excited? Wow. Um, just knowing that I'm executing on a plan that I've set for myself, you know, a, 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 a definite purpose and, and being able to execute upon that definite of purpose, even in spite of all of the challenges that you might have been, you might encounter along the way, having definite of purpose and, and executing upon a plan that I put together and being able to see things manifest in the world, that that lights me up. Like I, I love that shit. Like if e even if you stumble and you know there's there's been several businesses that I, that we've started and th they didn't all go so well, but you know being able to see things manifest in a way that you know hey I'm I'm setting out to do something and this is. This is me creating. It's, 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 it's almost like being a real life alchemist, you know, practicing alchemy in real life. And that's that, to me that 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 lights me up just as much as is being with my family and being the provider for my family that I am. Very, very cool. Designing your life around that to make sure that you're in a position where those things that get you excited, like that's the key to life, right? Like everybody wants to wake up in the morning and be excited about what they're going out to do. But so few people are willing to commit to that kind of life because yeah. it is, I mean, it's a stretch. Like it's you... tough. I mean, like just to touch on what you were describing with your child and, and, and that shift in perspective that you had when you, you had to step up and step in and help out, you know, the, the people that that's having a positive mental attitude, you know, people forget the shift in perspective. Cause you could have sat there and bitched and complained like, no, honey, I got shit to do. I can't do this. I got this and that people do that all the time. And, you know, in my own life, situations of similar similar situations have come up, and it's like, you know what? Yeah, I got shit to do. Yeah, this is going to change what I have to do, but damn, I'm blessed to be able to, to, to not have to worry about stopping that and being with my son or helping my daughter or whatever it is. Being in a position to where you have the time to, to dedicate towards whatever, whatever comes up, you know, regardless of what it is you're working on or what you want to get done, being in a position where you're not going to be negatively affected by the time shifting in another direction. It's, you know, that, that, that is where it's at. Having the grid ability to get to a point like that is, is crucial and keeping it with you the whole time, man, people don't understand. If you don't, if you don't live this life, if you don't practice 
the things that Adam shares and the things that we're discussing today, it, it's, it's a very, very bumpy, long road. It's a lot of work to live the way that we live, and it's a, it takes a lot of fucking effort. I mean, people look at the stuff that I, that I do and the things that we've been able to accomplish, and, oh, we're so proud of you, we're so proud of you. Yeah, you're proud of me, but fuck, where were you when, mm-hmm. you know, I was getting kicked in the balls every day? You know, where, where were you when things were tough? And thanks for patting me on the back now that I'm here. You know, like, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a long, bumpy road if you don't do it, and it's a long, tough road when you do do it. But choosing the two paths in life, I'd much rather have something that's difficult that's going to produce the things that I want versus being fucking miserable and not, not being able to achieve anything and being stuck. 100%. Yeah, it's definitely, it's all about the challenge and keeping your eye on the future. Five years from now, what can we expect from Paul Macaluso? Five years from now, I'll be a, a real estate fund manager and we will most likely have somewhere in the neighborhood of north of a thousand affordable housing units and market rent units. So that's, that's what's on the horizon for me is I will be a fund manager and we'll be deploying capital in hopefully this market and as well as a couple others. Man, I want to jump up. Like you just got me excited because believe me, that was not that was not scripted. I did not give you that question ahead of time. I didn't but, get any questions ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> but damn, your response was like, that's what I'm looking for. Like when well, you it's have, again, it's executing on on a on a preset plan. You know, having yes. a definiteness of purpose. I, I, I invest in multifamily housing for myself. And one of the things that I personally believe in having lived in the environments that I live in is if you can take housing, the stress of housing and clean, respectable housing off of the shoulder of somebody and just provide it to them, you know, not necessarily for free, but being able to give somebody a clean, respectable environment, there's so much shit that people have to deal with on a daily basis in their own lives that make things so much of a challenge for them. Housing is one of them. And if you can provide a space for somebody to come home to, and just unwind and be like, man, damn, at least I don't have to worry about fucking rats crawling across the floor, or I don't have to worry about, you know, the stress of everything else now that I'm in my little sanctuary, you know, and you don't have neighbors banging on the fucking walls and acting crazy, you know, that's, the, that's what I do. I go in and I turn these, these communities around. When I get there, they're not like that. They're, they're disaster zones. They're, they're filthy. There's people that need to go that aren't, you know, treat, being respectful. And I tell all my tenants, it's very simple. You know, I got three, three rules. Number one, don't fuck around when it comes to the money. Pay your rent on time, all right? Because if you don't pay your rent on time, this property won't get maintained. It's not about what I'm doing with the money in my own personal life. It's about providing you guys the type of environment you deserve to live in. Mm. You know, two, keep your space clean. Don't live like a fucking pig, you know? And third, be respectful of your neighbors. Be courteous. Don't cause trouble with your neighbors because one bad apple will spoil the bunch. And I'm not going to have one person in here fucking around and I got three or four people that want to leave. It's not going to happen. So everybody gets the same spiel every time they move in and they, you know, you better damn well follow those three rules. Otherwise I could be the best landlord you've ever had. I could be the worst landlord you ever have. You're either going to love me or you're going to hate me, but those three rules got to get followed. Well, I would say that's for the betterment of everybody. And the way to get to that thousand units in that fund is you got to have clear, I mean, you got to have those priorities. You got to have those standards. Um, Man, I'm excited. Whatever I can do to support you in your efforts. Listen, I am here. Absolutely. 1000%, man. I'm the same way, man. If there's anything that we can do to complement what you're doing, by all means, don't ever hesitate. I appreciate that. And Paul, it has been an absolute pleasure to have you on here this morning. Uh, Completely unscripted incredible words from Paul Macaluso. I love the power of gridability. He's a living uh, example of what happens, power of perseverance, overcoming all the odds, whatever you face. Man, I love your success story. I wish you much, much success. And we'll be here supporting you and cheering you on every step of the way. This has been another episode of Gridability. Signing off. Adam Clausen, your podcast host. We'll see you back here the next time.